I know last interview we had with you, we talked a lot about your book, which was brand new at that time. And the book is The Idea, The Seven Elements of a Viable Story for Screen, Stage, or Fiction. I'm not sure if we asked you this before, but how much of the book is dedicated to developing the character and how much of it is dedicated to developing plot? That's a good question. Um, you know, it's really, it's concept driven almost more than character or plot. Character or plot is all part of the overall concept, but the, the book is really about there's these seven different elements that you want to make sure your idea possesses. So. And, and those seven elements describe the problem at the heart of the story. So the problem has to be punishing and relatable and original and believable and life altering and entertaining and meaningful. Those are the seven acronym of problem. So each one of those seven things has to do with plot and character. You know, you want your characters to be original in some way. You want your plotting to be original in some way. But most importantly, you want your concept to be original in some way. The concept that kind of holds it all together. Once you have an idea that meets all the criteria that you've laid out in your book, how do you go about structuring that idea into a screenplay? Well, a lot of people, I mean, I work with clients as a coach, you know, a consultant and help people do this and help guide them through the process. But I also do it myself as a writer. And I do think that the Save the Cat uh, book and its tools are helpful. I, I mean, I, my favorite thing about Save the Cat really are the 10 genres and working with and they each have like five subgenres each um, that he goes into in the second Save the Cat book. Save the Cat goes to the movies. Those genres, I think, are super helpful and very original and revolutionary for writers coming up with ideas for a movie. So I highly recommend those. But he also has the beat sheet, which is the thing that, that Save the Cat's most known for, which is the 15 point structural paradigm which I think was Blake Snyder building on other paradigms people had for three X structure going back to probably Aristotle, but certainly Sid Field and other people since that. And uh, I think he came up with some really good ideas for here's what the first half of act two of a movie usually looks like. And here's what the second half of act two usually looks like. And here's what the second half of act one tends to look like. And he came up with fun names for these different structural beats or sections in a movie. So I think that is a helpful tool some people don't like it and you know um, or have a love-hate relationship with trying to like fulfill especially when it's like it has to happen on this page or that page which i'm not super strict about but but i do think he had some pretty good arguments for why he felt this is a good page length and this is a good place in the movie for certain things to happen so anyway when you do a one of those beat sheets it ends up being like a four-page document uh, I think ideally where so what that means is you're not spelling out every single scene you're not figuring out every single thing that happens in your movie yet because that would take 10 or 15 pages there's no way to really do that in four pages if you're trying to do that in four pages and I've seen people do it often the note they're going to get back is this isn't a f enough for a movie there's not enough scenes here there's not enough that, that's happening for this to fill two hours so it's really about kind of summarizing the key sections of the movie and then the key points like the midpoint and the break in act two and the break in act three, which are just moments. You know, you kind of figure out what those moments are and then you summarize the sections in between so you kind of have an overview of the structure. So that was one of Blake's, Blake Snyder's big contributions to the world and, and, I, and I think it's helpful. So I, I will use that as one method for kind of working toward a structure. Would you say most of the writers of screenwriting books and teachers, it's basically all the same, but they, they name things in a different fashion? It's just their style of presenting it? I think there is some truth to that, 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 that people are a lot of times saying the same things in different books and different paradigms for story and screenwriting. Um, but I also think people do come at it differently and sometimes have different conclusions about you know, some of the precepts that they come up with. I mean, like, for instance, the Dramatica theory of story, which I've played with a lot over the years, ha has a pretty different and specific take on how stories work compared to, you know, Save the Cat. And like the hero's journey, the Christopher Vogler book, that is, my understanding is that's a certain kind of story he's talking about, which is a hero's journey type story, which not every story is a hero's journey type story. But if you're writing that, that book really goes into kind of what the, the structural points tend to be in those kind of stories. Um, and but but yeah, I do think to a large extent people are speaking about the same things. Like most people agree that like the end of act two of a movie, about three quarters of the way through, there's usually a major defeat, crisis, all is lost moment. And then there's a one last kind of chance in the third act to solve whatever the main kind of problem of that story was. And they might call it different things, but they kind of are talking about the same thing. 
Did you read any of the William Goldman books? Like, Which Lie Did I Tell? Or I did. I read Adventures in the Screen Trade. I think I also read Which Lie Did I Tell? But those are more about my life as a screenwriter as opposed to here's how to do it, you know? I don't think he was trying to teach so much as to talk about what, what life can be like doing it professionally. What was your takeaway from uh, what he talked about in terms of what life could be like? Um, I know he's a very straight shooter. Didn't, yeah, didn't well, I mean, uh, I guess I think I read Adventures in the Screen Trade before I was really working in the industry, as I recall. And, uh, you know, it, it was probably a foundational book at the time for understanding what it's like in Hollywood as a writer. Um, I remember him saying things like, you know, it basically takes me six months and in six months I'll have a, a screenplay. It'll be a real screenplay. It may not be the screenplay you want. It may not be a screenplay that will get made into a hit movie, but it will be a, it will be a real, I can create this product in six months. I remember that staying with me. And of course the thing people all often quote is the nobody knows anything line, which I think is sometimes misunderstood a little bit because I don't think he was saying nobody knows anything about what tends to work in story or in movies. I think what he was saying is no one can say for sure what movie is gonna be successful at the box office, which to me are two somewhat different things. And so, I mean, I think there are people that know some things about story structure and character and writing and what, what tends to work better than what tends to not work as well. They're not hard and fast rules that are 100% applicable at all times, but I do think there are principles that are good to understand and follow as in any endeavor it's not just something that you just dive in your first time and wing it and it all goes great usually um, however it's true that nobody can say for sure this idea this script this movie is going to definitely sell or not sell be a hit or not be a hit and that is something that he talked about a lot that you know it's not an exact science <laughs>